Dear Jewel, I left you with a few things to always hold on to. Loyalty, elusiveness, and brute force. If you remember these lessons, you will survive. If anyone can, it's you. Love you always, Dad. Xbox One S, starting at $299. All right, PS4 Pro. Pete, you're like our one of our resident tech experts. You, uh, can tech spurt. Tech spurts. Wow. Tech. T e c h. Spurt. Like you're spurting yes. tech. Yes. Uh, I was at the PlayStation <laughs> event in New York last week. Uh, Fancy. It was, yeah. It was relatively light compared to what I thought. I mean, I'm surprised they showed both. I mean, we definitely expected the slim because we knew like yeah. for those leaks that Sony, you know, still didn't confirm it after those leaks uh, a few weeks ago. But uh, yeah, they showed off the Pro as well with like HDR compatibility, uh, obviously like a 4K if you have a 4K TV. Uh, I don't it's know. the club sandwich of video game consoles. Yeah, it's exactly. Three layers. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, PS4 Pro, it's uh, interesting times we are in. You know, we've seen a lot of consoles kind of get these like hardware revisions, some with like the most modest upgrades that maybe a developer would notice, but you wouldn't. Uh, Pro is sort of, and you can maybe point to Xbox One S, but PS4 Pro is really the first step in, in terms of, um, you know, these like semi you know, console generations just aren't going to exist anymore. It seems like Ugh. these just like, yeah. you know, uh, midterm updates uh, to a system and it's coming with things like HDR and 4K and there's a lot of stipulations there in terms of how those things will apply. I mean, the nice thing is that the uh, HDR feature will apply to all PlayStation 4s, unlike Xbox One, which is currently only doing it on the S. But 4K is pretty much the focus of the Pro. Uh, we can also assume VR will be a focus. Um, and it's going to be interesting, I think, for developers as well as the audience to deal with this uh, division of the market. You were just telling me the other day, we were talking about Battlefield 1, uh, having, you know, they had that bundle announced on Monday that was like, you know, HDR support, whatever. We, I was like digging deeper because I don't know too much about uh, the P, uh, PS Pro, but that also depends on the developer releasing the HDR 4K for, for PlayStation Pro specifically, right? They have to allow mm -hmm. that to happen. They yeah. Can, yeah. So 4K is not a guarantee. Um, it, it sounds like now we're going to see some games that are native 4K. They're going to be very modest games in terms of technical demands. Other games will render at a lower resolution, be scaled up, to output at 4K. So oh, it'll okay. still fill your 4K TV at that resolution, okay. but it's not rendered natively there. Um, HDR seems to be a thing like 4K that is going to be optional for developers. And if they if they want to have it work, they have to enable it in, in terms of like, sure, you might get HDR on the PlayStation 4 Pro, even though standard PS4 supports HDR, I don't think that means you're automatically going to get it for any game that supports it on PlayStation Pro. This confusion is just, is already confusing as hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're you know. wondering if it's this is just becoming the reality of obviously like console generations now reacting like how long did it take like PC audiences. They've always been used to this stuff like upgrading tech, but it's still it's weird because I think being consoles people assume it's just going to be this set evolution that takes place. Yes, and you know, I think with PC, like you said, people are used to the idea that the quality of a game is going to be in flux relative to their hardware. Console gamers have always just expected a certain standard. Um, and I think a lot of that will persist, but it's going to become difficult when people are just choosing what console to buy. It's not gonna be, does, does, is my console strong enough for this game, right? Like once they have a PS4 Pro or a Slim, I think people are gonna understand like, okay, I can really only focus on games that have this tech. Um, but making that choice, that's going to be hard for a lot of people. Yeah, but luckily for Sony, once people make that decision, they're pretty much in good shape. And I think you're going to see a lot of people picking up the Pro as opposed to the Slim. Sure. Uh, what do you think of the price points now that you're speaking about Slim and Pro? So the Slim starts at 300 Three. right? And then Pro is 4 Right. Uh, so we don't know how much Scorpio is going to cost. It sounds like Microsoft is, you know, based on their their presentation at E3, like really doubling down on this thing and trying to hit a home run, that might be a more expensive system. Um, but one of the things driving down the cost of the Pro is that it doesn't have a UHD Blu-ray drive in it, which means you cannot watch 4K content off of a disc. You have to stream it. That is something that is built into the Xbox One S. Yeah. It so, seems like a weird omission for the Pro. Do you it's a have weird omission. why that might have been the case? Um, I think it's, a, it's an easy move for Sony to keep costs down because... Um, 
let's be honest. I think 4K for a lot of people, it's going to be hard to discern that difference unless mm-hmm. something like, you know, you walk into a store and you see these like really intricate nature documentaries on 4K and like, yeah, a flower <laughs> under a macro lens is going to look amazing. Sure. Right? Right. But, right. but like a Hollywood blockbuster, like you're going to, you know, in the explosion and the fire, you're going to miss all that stuff as it's moving by really fast. So I think cutting costs there, allowing people to stream 4K from services they already subscribe to is not going to necessarily hamper their 4K entertainment experience. They'll have access to it. Um, for Microsoft, I think it's a boon for the Xbox One S. That helps them sell that system a little bit better. It is the cheapest UHD player out there. On the other hand, it is strange it's not on the Pro because Sony basically owns the Blu-ray format. It is something that they pioneered and that they have been a champion of for so long. So it's a little strange. Um, and that starts at $400, am I correct, for the, yeah. the Pro? I think that is an excellent price. Um, it's, going to, it's going to be really telling uh, how it'll impact PlayStation VR and how many games can really support 4K for people to understand that argument and really go for it. Um, and I mean, if you I, don't I, have a 4K yeah, TV, I don't even sure. have one. Like $1,000, I mean, sure. you're probably going to drop but on people, that? People like to future-proof. How many of sure. us bought Xbox 360s before we had an HD TV? Right. You know? Definitely. And that's the thing with... It was... <laughs> definitely. It was... <laughs> I definitely did buy one before I had an How about HD refurbished TV? 360? <laughs> I, I still have my f- launch day 360 that never yeah. got... It got a red ring, but I wrapped the towel around it and I still have it. I'm not kidding. It's still in the towel? Yeah, it's in the towel. <laughs> I haven't checked if it works, but it's still in my room in a towel. <laughs> no, but um, I got to see a few games up close because HDR, obviously, like you were saying, is definitely more noticeable than 4K to me. Yes, for yeah, I think, yeah. And HDR is the exciting thing for me because like, obviously if you have like any kind of like interest in photography, HDR is a big deal. Like phone, uh, iPhones have it now as of the 6, I believe. Mm. But the thing with, uh, it was kind of weird because at the presentation, people around me were all saying they showed a few games during the presentation with the old graphics as opposed to right. the HDR. And then uh, we went backstage and Naughty Dog had both The Last of Us oh, Remastered okay. and Uncharted 4. Obviously, The Last of Us Remastered at its foundation is a PS3 game. It still looked really good with them, the PS4 Pro. But then they had a button that they had equipped. Like, I think they were pressing the touchpad for the purposes of this uh, presentation. And they were switching between the, like, Nathan Drake was swimming underwater in a coral reef at one point, later in, like, in a Libertalia in Uncharted 4. But the original footage looked worse. Like, I was like, I just played this game in March or whatever it was. I don't remember looking that bad and like I thought I was just being crazy but and I don't want to I'm not a, like accusing Sony or Naughty Dog or anything but do it other people were saying is that just looking this bad in comparison to the PS4 Pro with HDR HDR definitely looked really good but the original footage looked like it had an extra layer of fog over it it depends on a lot on the TV you're playing and the settings that are applied to it mm-hmm. maybe those TVs weren't calibrated appropriately yeah I don't uh, know maybe it just looks that intentionally much intentionally different well, inten- I mean yeah but or uh, yeah you wonder like if there's any doctoring to make the old footage look Worse in comparison. That's weird. But here's the thing. I don't think they would do that because HDR is going to work for existing PlayStation 4 owners. It doesn't influence their decision to buy a PS4 Pro. So there's actually right. no incentive for Sony to do that. Right. If you've got a PS4 already, it's going to work. And I think a lot of people at those events Definitely. have one, probably. Are you guys tempted to buy the Pro now? I mean, obviously, the Slim is good for people who don't have a PS4. There's no reason yeah. to buy a PS4 Slim purportedly if you have a 4 already. I want to know, I want to know more about the manufacturing process that goes into this because my PS4, I like the way it looks. It's a little loud. Mm-hmm. I want a quieter system. If the PS4 Pro can give me more power and be quieter than the standard PS4, yeah, probably a couple of years I'll buy one. Yeah. If if they're going to adopt this like Apple-esque S release, why can't we have that whole system, right? Like, why can't I exchange my PS4? Well, you can. You can take it to GameStop and get 20 bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, that's what's the killer for me, you know? And I'm sure for everyone. It's like, like my buddy had... Buddy of mine just got a PS4 and I showed him this and he's like, great. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I think I'll eventually get one. I mean, that's, you know, this is like our job here. You you want to have the best equipment for the job, but I don't know. That's such a kill. 400 bucks is a lot. Yeah. I mean, it was actually, I, th- I think it's a fair price point compared to what I thought it would be. But at this point, yeah, 400 doesn't seem like something I want to drop on this. But then another thing that the presentation, about the presentation that stood out that if we had been talking about is, they never once during the presentation said this is the most powerful console. Like remember, like the Xbox One for the Scorpio presentation, they were like, "This is going to be the most powerful console ever made at this point." Right. And like you were just touching on this, how like this in a lot of ways can become a boon for the Scorpio um, and the S because of its Blu-ray capabilities. But I know it's almost like Sony's pushing the this is the most powerful console for the time being in November whenever it launches with PlayStation VR and everything. Yeah. 
but you think they would have pushed that if that were true. But I mean, obviously like the Scorpio is still the one that I'm more curious about. I think Sony is doing their best to court existing PlayStation owners to buy the new version. I think their market share kind of speaks for itself in relation to Microsoft, where Microsoft really has to account for the fact that they've had the weaker of the two main consoles since launch, and that has been the narrative around it. So maybe it's true that Sony's PlayStation 4 Pro will not be as powerful as Scorpio. Who knows if they know that or not? But they also don't need to really try to back up that claim. And if they were to make that claim now, before Scorpio is announced and we really know what's in it and proved wrong, that would suck. Sure. So... I, I can I can understand why they wouldn't do that. Yeah, it's, you know it's like we try to like avoid absolutes, like absolute statements and previews and stuff like that, but for good reason, right? Because things change, mm-hmm. and uh, we don't always know everything. And I think that's the place where Sony is right now. It's interesting to look at. You wonder how much of this is just a reaction to Microsoft, the Scorpio. Obviously, like the rumors, the Neo came out, like when Giant Bomb had been reporting on the actual like information about it. Um, you wonder if they push this up farther because of the Scorpio and like obviously like NX news is rumored to be coming out really soon now Mm -hmm. and that's going to be what like quarter two next year? March. Purportedly. Okay. You wonder how much of this is like reactionary as opposed to something Sony had planned all along. I don't know how fast they can pivot in that respect when it comes to the actual economics behind the scenes and like you said manufacturing which I don't have much background in but I don't know. I'm wondering if this was something they pushed forward a little bit. Well, the good thing about um, for Sony and Microsoft is they're working with AMD to make parts that are relatively simple for manufacturers of those chips to adapt to. Uh, In the past, you know, the PlayStation 3 was notorious for being the most inefficient console to create uh, the chips that powered it uh, for various reasons. Um, I think this has more to do potentially with the launch of PlayStation VR. Well, more than anything, and that's that's sort of spurred Sony's expediency in this regard to get out there first. I think they were just ready to, frankly. Um, and you know, it's it's also worth noting that maybe Microsoft is biding their time so they can wait and see what other people do before sure. they actually commit to what Scorpio is. It might be the inverse. It might not be Sony being reactionary. It might be Microsoft just being slow or you know patient. Let's sure. Say. Yeah. Anyway, um, the slim is definitely obviously, like I said, for like people who might not be in the game yet as far as this console generation goes, but the Pro is the one that like we're looking for, especially with like, you consider Pro coming out plus buying PSVR, which is how much? $400. So 400 plus 400 plus 800. I mean, if you haven't upgraded to a 4K TV yet, that could be like 1800 bucks if you want to completely upgrade all at once. Is it that much? I thought 4K TVs were fairly... I was thinking they were around 1000 like, I could I be way off. I thought they were like $500. Well, you, you oh, want really? to get one that's a decent size because you're not going to notice the difference in resolution if you have something that's like 32 inches. I don't even know if you can buy it. I'm sure you can, but you really want to be like 50 inches and above. <clears throat> oh, okay, and, I'm not... Yeah, I'm not. And, and so beyond that, there are a lot of different things that come uh, like with HDR. Like You need to get a TV that has 4K and the proper HDR support. I've seen people who have been picking up Xbox One Ss thinking their TV's up to snuff they plug it in and the console is like, yeah, you're missing this stuff. You can get a little bit of a benefit. So it's like, if you want to get the TV that has everything you need, you're not going to be buying that cheap knockoff made in China. Not knockoff. You're not going to be buying, you know, that uh, well, econo- like, economic 4K TV. You're going to be buying one that's a little bit more robust. Or like the first generations of 4K, right? Like they have improved right. over the years. So yeah. those are like the leftovers, I guess, right? Yeah. Sure. Oh, so what, what's the price range for like a 4K TV? I was thinking like a night, like a decent one was like a thousand. I could be overshooting that. I was looking uh, the other day during this announcement, just loosely, not really like based on these hard specs I was just referring to. And I kept seeing 60 inches between 800 and a thousand dollars Okay. from people like Samsung, like ma- manufacturers. It's like, okay, I will probably look to mm-hmm. you. Um, I mean, you can get a 4K TV cheap, but will it support everything else? I don't know. Is it worth it at that point? Is it worth it at that point? Sure. So anyway, yeah, the the PS4 Slim is releasing September 15th, 2016, and that's going to be $300, whereas PS4 Pro is November 10th, 2016 for $400. So let us know what you think. Do you have a PS4 already and you're planning on getting a Slim? Probably not. Are you planning on getting a Pro November 10th? Let us know in the comments below.